Hi everyone and welcome back to New Egg TV. My name is Paul and today once again we have a special guest in the studio. This is JJ from Asus. JJ, thank you for stopping by today. Thank you for having me. And uh, what we're here to talk about is the Zonar Essence STX, which is a sound card from Asus. Uh, but it is a high-end sound card and it's designed uh, as a headphone amp. It's for audiophiles like JJ because JJ is an audiophile. So JJ, well, what sort of special things have you done with this card to make sure it meets your standards? Well, it's not just, uh, of course, our standards. Uh, actually, the the person that uh, leads our actual Zornar division is actually a musician. He actually has his own rockabilly band. Oh, okay. Um, so it's cool because um, he has a real passion and affinity to listen to music, you know. And so it's like, uh, I remember when we were first developing some of the aspects of this card, you know, Pearl Jam had just released uh, some live concert stuff, and we were going back and forth at, like, kind of what was the listening experience and how there was different tones between different op amps or different capacitors that we were considering for the card's development. And so, you know, internally, we're really passionate about audio, just like I'm sure a lot of the users out there that are looking at this um, are as well. And our big focus is always to try to maintain a high level of performance in all metrics. When we talk about performance, it's going to be things like the signal noise ratio, it's going to be the total harmonic distortion, it's going to be in the uh, really, 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 or, also, or almost eliminated noise floor in terms of keeping really good clarity, uh, dynamic range, and overall tuning a product that just meets a really high caliber level of performance. Um, and also to provide a high value. While this is going to be an expensive product compared to, of course, uh, very basic level sound cards like our Zonar DG or even entry level solutions that are built onto your motherboard, comparatively um, for a long period of time to get this same, same level of performance you had to spend two to three times as much in going into the professional sound card market uh, from like a company like Lynx Audio or something like that to get the same level of performance and functionality. So our goal was to really meet at putting out the best quality components that we could so things you know like Burr Brown DAX, um, you know Nichicon uh, uh, audio based capacitors, you know dedicated uh, high quality TI uh, onboard amplifiers for the headphone amp, things along those lines um, in terms of making sure that we meet all the components and then designing those all together in terms of performing uh, and providing a really high performing product. Now you guys have uh, specifically called this out as a headphone amp card, um, not just a sound card. So um, when you're speaking specifically ref with uh, reference to the amplifier built into this card, it's mm -hmm. designed for headphones. Yes. And uh, what, like from from, let's say I didn't know anything about sound cards and computers. What is the benefit of that as compared to, say, the built-in audio that I have on my motherboard? Well, uh, there's a measurement that's called actually headphone impedance. Okay. okay? Um, and headphone impedance will vary on the headset that you utilize. And essentially, it let, it, at a very basic level, it's kind of like a form of driving strength that's required. And without the correct support for that driving strength, the headphone might not operate correctly. And so the easiest way to find out uh, what the operating strength or the operating impedance is is to look on the box. A lot of consumer-based basic headphones phones or something you get included with like let's say you know uh, the headset that might come included with your cell phone or something like that it might be like 32 ohms or basic headphones that you're going to purchase are going to be 32 ohms but if you buy nicer quality phones from companies like Baron Dyke from Grotto um, you know or, or a multitude of other sources that are out there um, you know uh, Sony and different vendors, you can get um, impedance radiance that goes all the way up to 600 ohm. And so this card has an actual onboard amplifier that provides driving strengths all the way up to that marker. So we're essentially giving you the most flexibility at being able to take whatever ever headphone it is that you want and have it operate correctly on here because it's going to be supported under that range of operation. Now, what that comes down to in terms of being a, di a direct benefit is going to be improved clarity, response, uh, volume range, and uh, elimination of different uh, kind of artifacts or, or variables that could occur during the playback. And so some of these things might be like uh, shadowing or ghosting, it could be crackling, um, it could be uh, reduced maximum uh, volume ranges, a lot of different variables that are going to occur if let's say you took like a 150 ohm headphone and connected it to a product that only could output 32 ohm, which would generally be pretty much on every motherboard. So speaking uh, uh, with reference to the amplifier, not necessarily an amplifier as in it's making the sound louder, it's actually just going to meet that driving strength requirements for the higher end headphones? Yes, but conversely that would actually also be able to drive a higher volume range as well. Um, so even in regards to if you took 32 ohm versus uh, this sound card and 32 ohm on a motherboard, we're going to be able to drive cleaner, higher, more dynamic range sound in itself. So you're going to actually be able to have higher volume ranges because of the componentry that we're putting on there. So even if you're just somebody that's looking for more volume, uh, a sound card is going to give that to you in terms of a dedicated product. Now you might not necessarily need to step up to a Zonar STX to do that. You could go with something like a Zonar DGX. Um, with the STX, really the focus is at the purists. 
the guys that are really looking for the highest grade audio quality out there, right? So these are people that download high resolution HD tracks from places like HD tracks or uh, eMusic. Um, you know, they listen to Blu-ray movies, Blu-ray music. Um, you know, they're really interested in high quality music playback or movie playback. Now, you could entirely use this card, though, for the purposes of gaming, and it would also serve great for positional-based audio. But as you noted with the, head forward, uh, the head, uh, headphone amplifier design, it is really focused at two channel. So that's going to be for headphones or for monitors, uh, which are sometimes the name of very nice speakers mm. uh, for companies like Audio Engine or KRK. There are different monitor companies out there, so it really uh, is up to you. And and for people that are kind of interested in some of the more uh, performance-oriented details on the card, you know, one of the cool things in, in the accessories you're going to cover is the test report that we have included that shows actually all the measurements in terms of all the performance characteristics of this card to show you the kind of the attention to detail that we've brought with it. Okay, so uh, we've gone over sort of the target audience for this card and uh, who's really going to make the best use out of it because it's really... It it says audio files on the box. That's who yeah. it's aimed at. Uh, so let's go over the accessories you mentioned uh, mm -hmm. just to see what else comes in the box and then we'll uh, go over the card itself in a bit more detail. So sure. um, I see we have a lot of documentation over here and you were mentioning this audio precision test report. Yeah, so this is actually compiled internally by our team. So if we, uh, we go ahead and actually open it up here, we can see here that take, for instance, uh, this card is actually rated at a really outstanding uh, signal to noise ratio of 124 dB. It's about almost as high as you can get on any product right now on the market. So it's fantastic. And here we've included all that test report information. Um, or here's another marker such as the frequency response, which is an important indicator of what's that range, mm -hmm. right, in terms of the uh, characteristics on the sound. Um, uh, total harmonic distortion, this is a really, really important measurement, which is essentially, especially for um, headphones, almost to the point of uh, not being any, be able to be any better. It's at 0.0001%. Um, so it's an outstanding THD marker uh, for headphone performance. And that was really the goal here with this card, is to get a lot of these markers of measurement to be as neutral and as high performing as possible. So uh, we include all this information, as well as for people that don't know as much on some of the aspects behind sound cards. There is actually like a glossary that we also have in here that goes into some other information regarding what are some of these actually values and what do they mean. Okay, so glossary, very helpful if you're like me and you're just getting started as an audiophile. Uh, but we also have, of course, the typical quick start guides. So yeah, correct. That's also a standard setup guide, pretty straightforward in terms of just, you know, how to install the card, how to make sure that it's connected. Um, you know, some key points, as we'll see on the card, is make sure to provide active power because there's an independent power supply mm -hmm. on the card that does need to receive po uh, power from the power supply so that it receives the overall best driving strength so you can get the best quality performance. But that is mandatory. You will not be able to have the card work correctly with the power being connected. Okay, uh, well, we have a couple other items. Uh, uh, the other items are just some some basic uh, kind of, you know, we got like a little Zonar poster, right? Okay. And then, then the other one is going to be like a breakdown of the other Zonar products that we have in the lineup as well. Okay, and then uh, we also, of course, have a software and driver installation disk. Yep, and like always, uh, that you would recommend uh, the user guide and manual is also on there, uh, but as always, you know, you know, make sure to head over to support.asus.com for the latest version of the software, which for this card, uh, since it's released, we've definitely done actually quite a number of drivers to continue to optimize and extend performance and compatibility with different types of audio file programs. Okay, so uh, latest drivers available on the support, mm -hmm. asus.support? Support.asus.com. Support.asus.com. Yep. Almost have that memorized. Uh, that said, just a few more accessories over here. So we have a couple RCA plug to 8th inch audio jacks right there. So you can use those for the uh, RCA jacks. Uh, they are also gold plated. You also get a quarter inch to eighth inch adapter here, and that's for either of you to your two quarter inch uh, outputs or inputs right there. Finally, you also get a little adapter guy right here, which I'm going to ever so gracefully pull the cap off of. And essentially what you have at the bottom here is an SPDIF out. Uh, it can also operate as a coax out. Um, and if you want to use a Toslink SP SPDIF, you just take this little guy here, and you plug it straight in, and now you have a Toslink optical out. Now let's take a closer look at the audio card itself. And uh, we might as well start here with the inputs and outputs since we were talking about those. Correct. So you can see there we've got a pretty ex expansive set of connections that are available there, much more focused towards the high end in terms of the space, um, but really focused at two channel in terms of uh, headphone usage or two channel in terms of like a monitor or speaker setup. Now we do have an optical output here. This is a Toslink or a coax optical output. So you do have multi-channel digital support if you were to utilize that. But in terms of your analog connectivity, it is focused at stereo. 
Uh, now, if you're doing multi-channel, uh, how, how high up does that go if you're going to use the uh, SPDF? That would be supported up to 5.1. 5.1, okay. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, as JJ mentioned, you got the uh, quarter-inch jacks right here, as well as those RCA jacks. Mm -hmm. And now, let's flip around here so we can say this, uh, this is a PCI Express card. It will slot into an X1 PCI slot. Uh, we were also mentioning, as we went over the documentation, that there is a power requirement. So right here at the back, we have a 4-pin Molex connector. So make sure you get that plugged in to power the card properly to make use of it. And then, uh, of course, here on the front, we have a, a handsome uh, brushed aluminum cover, um, which is protecting some of the hardware, but uh, it also serves another function. That's correct. It's also there for EMI, so to actually eliminate uh, electromagnetic interference or to reduce it. Essentially, we just want to help to obstruct any type of interference that could be affecting the onboard components in terms of helping, uh, excuse me, uh, in terms of reducing the overall performance characteristics of the capacitors, the DACs, and the different hardware that we have on the card. So it serves an aesthetic purpose, but also a practical purpose in help helping us to provide the highest quality level of playback. Okay, a uh, couple more connections here at the back. Uh, we have an old school, uh, if you have a, a CD-ROM, DVD-ROM that uses one of these, chances are if you're using um, Windows Vista or newer you do not need this connector, but then also you provided a standard front panel HD audio connector so mm -hmm. uh, folks can connect their front panel uh, mic and headphone jacks if they are so inclined. Correct. And now we're going to talk about the actual design and layout of the card and um, could you hold that for just a moment? Sure, because no I, problem. Dropped my screwdriver. Okay, let me take off this panel really quick so you can talk a little bit more. So I will make note you're only taking off one screw, but there are a couple other screws that we took there off are, beforehand. There are three more that, that we pre-removed, so this would be smoother, which was a theory that may or may not be proving true. Okay, there we go. So here you can see that definitely the card looks uh, really, really complex. You got a lot of stuff going on here, and that's really due to the high-end componentry that we've put onto the card. So, you know, we have a uh, Texas Instruments Burr Brown PCM 1792 uh, a uh, DAC. That's a 24-bit audio DAC with a 124 dB SR. Uh, so really outstanding overall core key component in terms of really helping to bring the sound quality up. Uh, and that's powered in conjunction with a lot of the other high-end componentry that you have, such as the Nichi Con caps that we have here in terms of audio. Um, one of the other really cool points is that, is that we have swappable op amps. Now I know that you said that you play guitar. I did. Um, and so uh, this is very similar to where if you were to use like a tube-based amplifiers, uh, if you change the tubes out, you can have different characteristics in terms of the sound experience. And this is very much the same level of functionality. So you can go ahead and trade out the op amps that we have on here for different ones uh, that could be more character toned towards the music that you're going to be listening to. So maybe a little bit more, uh, you know, bassy, maybe a little bit more bluesy, maybe a little bit more rock. If you're maybe into more classical, uh, you know, maybe you want a little bit more treble oriented tone, you can find all kinds of different op amps that are catered towards those different types of usage. The ones that we've gone with are very high quality, but focused at being kind of clean, neutral, and kind of favoring an overall solid scape, uh, regardless of the genre that you're working with. So that our goal was to here give you a really high level of uh, clarity, uh, overall good tone and response. Okay, and um, as you mentioned, that like right here we have a separator. Uh, that's sort of dividing the uh, PCB. Into Correct, yeah, and then that's just to help to eliminate uh, different types of interference that can come from different parts of either power delivery or different types of processing sides of the board. So overall, it's it's really just at, at that bringing that attention to detail to give us a higher performing part in terms of the sound performance, uh, whether it's uh, specifically in regards to, let's say, uh, digital to analog conversion or whether it's the power supply delivery to a relation to another part of the board. We just want to try to help to maintain the highest quality low performance. Okay, and uh, with that said, I'm going to delicately reassemble the card. And I can go ahead and hold that and, for you. Oh, thank you. Okay. And in addition to that, I'll note that uh, our software does come included with some specialized software that we've worked in conjunction with Dolby to go ahead and extend the functionality for other usage models as well, such as Dolby Digital Live, which is a re-encoding technology to let you take two-channel content and hardware recode into multi-channel. Uh, we have Dolby Headphone technology as well, and Dolby Virtual Speaker as well as Dolby Pro Logic 2. So a lot of different uh, secondary options to go ahead and influence and change the sound parameters. Uh, but for a lot of the audio purists, they're just going to want to go in there, be able to tweak and tune the card in terms of the EQ parameters, and then from there let their source file be the dictator in terms of the overall parameters 
uh, as far as how the sound is colored. Uh, but still, at the end of the day, we want to be able to give flexibility at being able to tune and tweak the sound as you uh, would like to have it be played back. So those are some software elements that you guys have in introduced as well? That's correct, and that's available all within the Zonar audio control panel. Okay. So that gives a little bit of perspective on our uh, flagship PCIe card uh, in terms of the Zonar Essence XTX. Okay, and that is going to wrap it up for this video on the Zonar Essence STX from ASUS. Uh, hopefully this video has given you guys a bit more insight into the proper use of this card as well as a lot of the design influences that have gone into uh, designing the card from a the ASUS perspective. So I want to say a big thank you to JJ again for stopping by today. Thank you for having me and I'd like to make one note that if users love to leave us any feedback on this, definitely let us know um, whatever your experience is, whether they're positive or negative or improvements you'd like to continue to see in the Zonar series of products. They can drop those on our social media sites like you know, Facebook or Twitter um, or also we're extending um, more support for the audio community at sites like headfi.org and their forum community where users can go ahead and detail more of their experiences with, uh, on the cards to go ahead and uh, allow us to keep making the best overall sound card products on the market. Right. And ASUS has always been great about taking customer, see customer feedback and uh, actually doing some design decisions uh, with that taken into consideration. So um, that is going to wrap it up for this video. If you enjoyed it, please head over to our new egg YouTube channel. You can find more videos just like it. You can also check out the ASUS ROG channel if you'd like to see more of JJ and his videos. Thanks a lot for watching, everyone. We'll see you next time on Newegg TV.